In previous videos, I talked about the various ways that are used to create potential difference. One, in particular, has great influence on our daily use and control of electricity. Magnetism. As I explained, when there is relative motion between a magnetic field and a conductor, charges in the conductor are separated, which creates potential difference, the potential and pressure for electrical energy to flow. We say that the magnetic field induces a charge in the conductor. In reality, we use a spinning motion to cause the relative movement, which results in the charges being pushed first one way, then the other. Alternating current, we call it. Most electrical energy in the world is generated this way. In an alternating current circuit, like any other circuit, the current that flows in the conductor also creates a magnetic field around it. And, because the current is changing directions constantly, so is the magnetic field. This is both a source of great benefit and a source of great complication and potential danger. Let's first look at the benefits. If another conductor is placed in that moving field, the field will separate charges in the conductor, creating voltage and the potential for current flow without any direct contact. The field induces voltage in the adjacent conductor. If one coil, supplied with AC, is placed adjacent to another coil, voltage is induced in the second coil by the movement of the magnetic field. The level of voltage induced is directly proportional to the ratio of conductor lengths between the two coils. Turns ratio, it's called. We put these properties together in a box and call it a transformer. And we need them because... Current flowing in wires heats them up, and over a long distance that heat adds up to considerable loss, up to 10% of transmitted energy. Since the power of an electrical circuit comes from a combination of the electrical pressure, volts, and the flow of current, amps, multiplied together to give us watts, it doesn't matter from an energy standpoint what the separate value of each component is, as long as the product of the two matches the power requirement of the load. We need a way to move power at high voltage and low current to minimize heating losses, but distribute it at low voltage so it's safer. And that moving field around an AC conductor gives it to us. That's what a transformer does. So we might generate power at, say, 4,000 volts, raise the voltage up to 100,000 volts in order to move it long distance, drop it down to 12,000 volts to distribute it locally, and then drop it to 240 or 120 volts to bring it into your house. So the 8 amps of current that it takes to power your hair dryer at 120 volts was transmitted to you at 100,000 volts and 1 one hundredth of an amp of current. Transformers allow us to make those changes easily and their invention in the 1880s led to the development of modern AC transmission and distribution systems. On a much smaller scale, the moving field around an AC conductor also has applications in the field of electronics. Think about this. While it's easy enough to see how the moving magnetic field cuts through an adjacent conductor and induces voltage there, can you also see that the moving field cuts through the conductor that it's coming from? That's right. As the lines of force move out from a conductor, they cut through that conductor, especially one that's coiled up. And when the field collapses as the source voltage changes polarity, the lines of force cut through the conductor again on the way down. And what do you get when there's relative motion between a magnetic field and a conductor? That's right, induced voltage. Except in this case, rather than being induced in an adjacent conductor, the voltage is induced in the source conductor. Turns out, because of the timing, the current that flows because of the induced voltage opposes the source current. Heinrich Lentz said it all in 1834. If an induced current flows, 
its direction is always such that it will oppose the change which produced it. In electronic circuits, the amount of opposing force is measured in Henry's after an American scientist who was one of the discoverers of magnetic induction. The strength of the force varies with the number of coil turns, the material the coil is wrapped around, the frequency of polarity change, and other factors. Inductors are useful in many electronic circuits. Where they are used as filters, they pass DC current, its constant, no moving magnetic field, but stop AC, the moving field induces opposing current, and they're used as chokes. They slow down the voltage spike that can occur when different voltages are connected, as in power supplies and converters. But those same properties, when occurring in high-voltage electrical systems, cause problems. The first one involves safety. Is a railroad rail a conductor? Do electrical lines run parallel to railroad tracks sometimes? Is voltage induced in the rail? You bet it is. Wire fences, metal buildings, rain gutters, vehicles can all have voltage induced in them when exposed to the moving magnetic field around an AC carrying conductor. Generally, the voltages and resulting currents are very low, well below safety thresholds. Distance is your friend here as the strength of the magnetic and electric fields diminish very rapidly as you move away. But by the same token, they gain strength rapidly as you move closer. And therein lies the danger. People often work on de-energized lines or facilities that are adjacent to lines in service. Those in-service lines have that invisible moving magnetic field and will induce voltage in any nearby conducting material wire, sheet metal, anything that conducts. This makes it essential to ground the lines or facilities being worked on before anyone is allowed to approach or touch them if they're adjacent to AC energized lines. The grounds serve to drain off induced voltages from nearby magnetic fields. Induced voltages are not high magnitude, but they can be enough to injure. Line workers have been electrocuted by induced currents on de-energized lines. The second problem is not so dramatic, but much more of a daily concern in system operation. In an AC circuit, if voltage and current rise and fall at the same time, in sync, volts times amps always gives you a positive value of watts. All the work being done is supplying energy to the load. However, if there are inductive effects in the circuit, the opposing current slows down the current change that the source is trying to make. It throws the voltage and current sine waves out of sync. A portion of the energy supplied to the circuit is being drawn off to create the magnetic field around the conductors. Now, multiplying volts times amps doesn't always produce positive values of watts. There's current flowing in the circuit that opposes the source. It's heating up the lines and using capacity, but not making watts. Reactive power, it's called. The out-of-sync portion is measured in units of volt-amps reactive, VARs, and the opposing current adds resistance to the circuit. Okay, so it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon of a very hot day, and power plants are pushing millions of watts out through transmission and distribution lines to homes and businesses. And all those homes and businesses are cranking up their air conditioners, run by motors, with many, many turns of wire wrapped around iron cores, all driven by AC current with its moving magnetic field. Millions of little inductive generators adding that opposing current flow to the circuit. And don't forget transformers. Thousands of them, each with multiple sets of wire-wrapped cores, heavily loaded, adding to the inductive flow. It adds up to a system with a load profile showing an increasing percentage of reactive energy, energy required to support the magnetic fields around the coils and taking up line capacity needed to supply watts to the load. As a result, there can be voltage fluctuations, brownouts, and in extreme situations, system-wide instability. 
What can be done? That will be covered in my next video, Capacitance. That was an introduction to inductance. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to see other videos in the series. Thanks for watching.